has some instruments from Africa, uh, from the, the man-made people of West Africa, and everybody's familiar with the man-made people. There's so many tribes in West Africa and so many dialects and peoples. But we're focusing today on the man-made people, which consists of so many other tribes like the Soninka, the Malinke, the Mandika, the Soso people, the Bamala people, all fitted on, under the Mandinko Empire, which was a big empire in West Africa, which uh, covers the countries of Senegal, Mali, Guinea, Gambia, parts of Sierra Leone, Ghana, so on and so on. So, to start off with, I'm going to I forgot to bring my map, but the, uh, just to give you a little uh, background on the, the Mandingo Kingdom. It was other kingdoms that came before then. It was the kingdom of Ghana. And even the kingdoms that came before Ghana, but Ghana, not the Ghana that we know today, but Ghana was like the name of the, of the, of the king. That, that's what you call king. This was the Sunika people of West Africa. So that was between the age of uh, 60, I mean, uh, 680 all the way through 1000 AD, this kingdom in West Africa and this country. Then came the Mandingo Kingdom, which started in 1200 AD. And anybody knows one of the, there was two great famous kings from that kingdom. Anybody familiar with any of the kings from, from the Mandingo Empire? Okay, one of them was the original Lion King. So there were three Lion Kings. There were Lion Kings in South Africa, East Africa, so forth and so on. So if you didn't want to go in West Africa, his name was Sunjata. Can everybody say Sunjata? Sunjata. Now, what makes Sunjata so powerful was that uh, he was called the Lion King, but he walked around, he was crippled. Okay, so, but he had the power to bring the Mandingo Empire together, okay, and to make it a great, powerful kingdom. Not only a kingdom of gold, ivory, and salt trade, that was trading all the way to East Africa, and also with Egypt, and all through the whole world, even connected with the Silk Roads, you know, trade that we had one massive trade. So they estimated that 80% of all the gold that Europe has came from Right. So another thing about this uh, this king, Sunjata, the Lion King, he had a great great grandson by the name of Kantan Musa. Can everybody say Kantan Musa? Kantan Musa. Now, not richest king in the world. Yes, Kantan Musa was one of the richest kings in the world. He was, and he was, he was a giving good king, very flamboyant. He made the Mandingo Empire even bigger. Uh, they said that when he went to Egypt, when he was going on his pilgrimage to Mecca, that when he went to Egypt, he he messed up the the you know the economics there because he bought so much gold that it took him 14 years to get their dollar, the Egyptian dollar, back to. Because he was just giving away gold everywhere. In South Arabia, he was giving away gold. So many people have wrote about this great king. But another thing that's powerful about Kankan Musa was that uh, there's evidence now that he had traveled to the Americas for trade and exploration. And that and he never came back. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so and his people, uh, they kind of a little bit upset with him. Because they said he took all the wealth out of Africa and just gave it a square it. But Forbes estimated that his wealth was worth $300 billion. And that was in 1200, so you can see how much gold he had. Gold was falling out of the pockets, literally. So Kan Kan Musa was another great person. So another evidence of that is the Olmec culture in Mexico, which they have the pyramids, a lot of artifacts. They have trade, they have artifacts from Africa in Mexico, and vice versa. So that's one evidence that he did make it there. But also the fact that they found that the uh, there was a time period in Africa when they had a, a famine, right? They found out that we was trading uh, 
Mays, yes. Mays with people in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so the, some of the Mays that they have in Africa now is a hybrid of African mixed with the Mexican indigenous folks. So that's just to show you how powerful this key is. So I'm going to go back to the Mandingo. So another thing that makes the Mandingo culture so important, especially for the African Americans, is that they have realized that a lot of the blues, the spirituals and gospels, is kind of coming from that area too. So that's another thing that's very close to us. We now know that the banjo came from West Africa, that the slaves brought the banjo here, just like many other instruments do. So I just want to piggyback on what this gentleman was saying. I'm from, I'm, I'm, I was born in Tennessee, so my folks in Nashville, Mount Pleasant, Columbia, which is one, what, it's about an hour and 30 minutes north of uh, Memphis, right? So you know some blues, straight gospel town. But when I went to school, uh, they had just, I was 10 years old, I was born in 1971, they had just started integrating in Tennessee. So I was the first to go at 9, 10 years old. So when I started going to the school, they told me, man, you totally retarded because of my, my language. I had real bad ebonics. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, they said it was bad, but then it turned out to be proper. Yeah. And like he said, that, so that's another thing that, that we're getting from is our oratory. You know, we had great preachers, the, the blues men, we have all these great oratory of storytelling, preaching, great leadership that, that comes from after. So, to go back to the banjo, now, now Africa has a lot of banjos, so banjos are gourd instruments. Everybody knows what a calabash is? Okay, so a this is what a calabash is. This is a small one that, you know, so in, in this, where it has beads around it, it's called a shaking. So you will see that in a lot of different African music, especially in Cuba and Brazil. This is a lot bigger, but this is a gourd too. So they have mastered the art of growing the gourds. They have growth gourds very huge. So not only are the gourds used for water containers and food, but also they use for a lot of instrumentation. So this is called a camelay guri. Can everybody say camelay guri? Camelay guri. So uh, camelay means young people, and a guri means uh, guitar heart. So in Africa, I found out that they have many types of harps. I didn't even have, I had no idea. I had no idea that the banjo all this time came from Africa. And one of the reasons why African Americans stopped playing the banjo is because of the black minstrel shows that they had. So they made us feel ashamed of who we are because they made fun of us playing the banjo with the watermelon figure. So it's the whole thing. So we started playing all those rhythms that came from West Africa, that came through, you know, the islands. Because, you know, that was one of the, the main spots for a lot of people to go to the islands first. So you have the banjo in Haiti, and that all over the place. But the, uh, that was the main reason why we stopped playing the banjo. But we started playing all the rhythms on the good time. So when you heard the good time, they categorize it as blues. But it was the, uh, the modes. Anybody know anything about music? You have different modes of music. You know, if you play a major mode, it's more of a happy song, but if you play minus, it, it becomes very bluesy. So, because of the influence of the Sahara Desert, we had all that kind of bluesy mode and this storytelling, this kind of different types of songs, right, that came from, from West Side. It came through the banjo. So, every country, in, uh, most of all the different tribes in Africa have their own type of banjo. Okay? So what happened now, so now the banjo makers here in America, they have to rewrite the whole history because all this time they was taking credit for that instrument. But uh, people like Thomas Jefferson and also because they had found some of the first banjos that are depicted, you know, in history, the African Americans are depicted as playing banjos. But we didn't know that. And Thomas Jefferson, he, he wrote about his slaves he said, yeah, my slaves, they played this instrument that's called the Badger. And they love it, and we love it, and all that stuff. But then the white man eventually started loving that instrument, and he took it up for himself. And black stuff was playing until like the 1920s when it came back into
to the jazz music in the rap time and so on and so on. Okay? So I just give you a little history. I don't mean to talk too much. I don't know what my time is going to be. Okay, okay. So Camelay and Goonie. Yeah, this is one of the, the you know the many harps from the region of the Mandate people. And uh, it has right now, it, it, it has usually it's between eight to twelve or fourteen strings. I have fourteen on here. But they had another instrument that came before this instrument, and another instrument that I'm going to introduce to you is called the Dusen and Boone. Can everybody say Dusen and Boone? Dusen and Boone. That's what the hunters used when they were out and hunting. Uh, they would use this Dusen and Boone to accompany them and play songs, but they would tell you songs of brave men and brave hunters and so forth and so on. And so that's why the purpose of the arts is used. I had no idea that there were so many banjos and harps. It's a big tradition all over Africa. From North Africa, you got the Egyptian harp. Then you go down to Ethiopia, you have what they call the King David's harp. So that one is a replica of the same one that King David played. And also that King Solomon, because you know, it's another part of history that we don't know is that a lot of the Hebrew Israelites went into Africa to escape slavery. Okay? So some of those people that they're talking about in the Bible are definitely descendants of us and different people. But that they have that heart there and they use it to praise God and they sing songs straight from the Bible or the Quran. And it's, it's, it's very, when you hear it, it's very powerful. It's like when you hear the gospel music down the south of the front. It's like the spirit be coming down for real. So we don't know about that. Ethiopia and Kush were one of the first Christians in the world mm -hmm. that defended Christians' faith all over. And so forth, the same thing with the Muslims. You had like a great Ethiopian chat that was one of his, was Muhammad's uh, right hand man. Uh, what's his name? Uh, first of all, prayer. Uh, yeah, 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 yes. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to start demonstrating to you how it sounds. It sounds uh, because it's in the pentatonic blues scale, the minor pentatonic, so it has that kind of flavor. 